Hello there boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 7.6 Part 1. Rename Fractions and Mixed Numbers. Our essential question for tonight is this first part of our essential question. How can you rename mixed numbers as fractions greater than 1? Please turn in your Go Math book to Lesson 7.6 and let's get started. Let's take a look at question number 1. Our goal is to change our mixed number to an improper fraction or a fraction greater than one whole. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at our whole. Now we have two wholes, and we know that the wholes are divided into fifths. So this first whole we can say has a value of five fifths. The second whole has five fifths, and then we have three fifths. Therefore, the addition sentence for this mixed number would be five fifths plus five fifths plus three fifths equals 13 fifths. Now a good way to check it is the way we taught earlier this year, which is we're going to multiply your denominator times the whole number, which equals 10 fifths, and then you're going to add the numerator, which is 3. So 10 plus 3 is 13 fifths. And here's an example of a picture of what 2 and 3 fifths could look like. You can see that this whole is cut into 5 fifths, this whole is cut into five-fifths, and then you have three-fifths. So two groups of five-fifths is ten-fifths, eleven-fifths, twelve-fifths, thirteen-fifths. Therefore, two and three-fifths equals thirteen-fifths. So go ahead and do this one with me along in your Go Math book. You can see that we have four wholes and one-third. Now this denominator tells me what my whole will be divided into. So if I have four holes cut into thirds, that first one's going to be three thirds, that's one hole, plus three thirds, that's two holes, another three thirds is three holes, and another three thirds is four holes. So far we have four holes, and now we just have to add this little one third right here. So I'm going to add that to my number sentence plus one-third. Now let's go ahead and add it all up. Remember, our denominator stays the same. They're all into thirds. And now let's just add up our numerator. Three, six, nine, twelve, plus one is thirteen. So the answer should be thirteen thirds. And we can check it by saying four times three is twelve, because that's four groups of three. And then you add one more to get 4 times 3 is 12 plus 1 more is 13 thirds. And this right here is what the model would actually look like. You would have 4 groups of holes that are cut into thirds because that's what my denominator is. So we have 3, 6, 9, 12 plus 1 more is 13 thirds. Okay, so look at number three. We can see that my whole is cut into fifths because it's one whole and two fifths. So on this one, we would have my one whole would be five fifths plus two fifths, which would equal seven fifths. Do you see how we did that? And here's what my model would look like to show why. Now looking at the model, this model shows one hole that's cut into five fifths, there's my one hole right there, plus another two fifths. So if you add up all the fifths, it would be one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths, six fifths, seven fifths. And you can always check with multiplication. One times five is five, because it's one group of five, and then you're going to add the extra two for the numerator. So that's going to be 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 more is 7, and those are cut in two fifths. That's why it's 7 fifths. All right, let's try number 4. Okay, so with number 4, you can see that my whole will be cut in two thirds. All right, so there's my 3 right there. So let's go ahead and make 3 thirds. That's the first whole plus three-thirds, plus three-thirds. That shows me my three holes. And now we can add the two-thirds. 
there's my number sentence. So let's go ahead and add it up. We have 3 thirds plus 3 thirds is 6 thirds plus 3 more would be 9 thirds plus 2 more would be 11 thirds. Let's check it. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2 more is 11. And here's our model of why it would be 11 thirds. Now this model is just a picture of why. Because we have 3 thirds, which is one whole, 3 thirds, which is another whole, 3 thirds, which is the third whole, which equals 9 thirds, plus 10, 11 thirds. All right, so that's how we get our answer. Okay, for number five, I want you to go ahead and pause the video, and I want you to go ahead and answer what would be your fraction greater than one whole for the mixed number of four and one eighth. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find that answer all by yourself. All right, here's the number sentence that I came up with for the number four and one eighth. Now I'm going to have one group of eight eighths, which is one whole, two holes, three holes, four holes, plus one more eighth. So you're going to keep your denominator the same when you add them up. So we'd have eight as my denominator, and my numerator would be eight, 16, 24, 32, plus one more is 33. So your answer should have been 33 eighths. All right, go ahead and press the pause button and try to do one whole and seven tenths on your own. And um, then when you're ready, push the play button and we'll see if we agree. Okay, for this one, you should have noticed that my whole, my number one right here, will be cut into tenths. So that would be ten tenths as my whole plus seven tenths should equal seventeen tenths. And when you check it with multiplication, ten times one is ten plus one more or plus seven more is seventeen. So that would be seventeen tenths. But this shows why it's 17 tenths, because you have one hole that's cut into tenths, and you have 10 shaded in, plus 7 more tenths, equals 17 tenths altogether. Okay, you should be getting really good at doing this. Go ahead and do number 7 on your own, press pause, and then we'll check it together when you press play. Okay, for this question, it's 5 and a half. And what you need to do is you need to say, well, how many halves would be five and a half? Because our whole is cut into halves, because it's cut into two parts. So for this one, you're going to make five holes that are have the denominator of two. So if it's going to be a whole, it has to be two halves is one whole. So you would have two halves plus two halves plus two halves plus two halves, plus two halves. Now that shows me my five holes because we have one hole, two holes, three holes, four holes, and five holes. And now we just have to add that one extra half. Okay, let's go ahead and add it up and see if we agree. I'm going to keep my denominator the same and count up my numerators. Two, four, six, eight, ten, plus one is eleven. So you should have 11 halves for your answer. So 5 and 1 half equals 11 halves. And last but not least, go ahead and pause the video for number 8. And go ahead and tell me what would be the improper fraction, also known as the fraction greater than 1 whole, for 2 and 3 eighths. Go ahead and work that out, and then press play when you're ready to check together. Okay, for this one, your whole is cut into eighths, so to make one whole, it needs to be written as eight eighths. So I would write it like this. Eight eighths is my one whole. But we can see that we have two holes here, so we have to do that one more time. Eight eighths plus eight eighths is two holes, plus my other three eighths. And let's go ahead and add them up. We want to keep our denominator the same and then just add our numerator. That would be 8 plus 8 is 16 plus 3 more. You should have gotten 
19 eighths. And of course, we can always check it with multiplication and addition. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 3 more is 19. So you should have got 19 eighths. So here are your homework questions for tonight. It's going to actually be the two problem solving questions at the bottom of the page. Number one, or the first one that you'll do is number 17. It says a recipe calls for two and one fourth cups of raisins, but Julie only has one fourth cup measuring cup. How many one fourth cups does Julie need to measure out two and two fourths cups of raisins? And number 18, if Julie needs three and one fourth cup of oatmeal, how many one fourth cups of oatmeal will she use? Go ahead and answer these two questions on your own. And then you can assess yourself to see how you feel. And then, of course, we will check these together back at school. So remember, if you're going to assess yourself, label yourself as a one if you're really not understanding this, two, apprentice if you're starting to get it, practitioner if you could do it all by your own, but you might get stuck a few times, or the expert, you understand this really well, you can teach it at school. And here are your questions. Go ahead and work them out at the bottom of your GoMath page, and we will check them at school. Have a great night. Bye-bye.